Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this realistic apple in watercolour and talk a bit about complementary colours. So what complementary colours are, some of the problems you might face when painting with them, but also how you can overcome these problems to create a painting that's bright, vibrant and fresh. So I hope you enjoy the video. So what are complementary colours? Well, very simply, they are colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel. So for example, red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple and so on. These colours when used together in a painting can really add contrast to your artwork and help to make your painting look bright, vibrant and eye-catching. And I'm going to try and demonstrate this today on my red and green apple painting. The principles will be the same though, whichever complementary colours you're using. All the materials I'm using today, by the way, will be listed below in the description box, along with a reference photo from Pixabay, as well as a link to my Etsy shop, where I'm currently having a 20% off sale. So do go and check that out if you're interested. So for the first layer on my apple painting, the colours I'll be using are, from the top, Cadmium Red Light, Quinacrinone Gold Hue, Transparent Green Gold, Olive Green Yellow and Sap Green. And whilst these colours do look quite harmonious together, being next to each other on the colour wheel here, I will be using a deeper red next to the green as I build up my layers. If you want to know more about colour harmony in your paintings, then I did do a video last week about this when I painted a Vimarana dog, and I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one if you want to go and give it a watch. So with my watercolours ready and having previously drawn out a pencil sketch in my watercolour sketchbook, I could start painting. For this initial layer I wanted to use the wet and wet technique to begin mapping out where the main colours on my apple were and give me something to build on. So I began by pre-wetting the whole of this first apple with clean water before dropping in first transparent green gold and then quinacridone gold hue and letting the colours mix together on the surface of the wet paper. I then added in some of the olive green yellow and sap green to the lower part of the apple whilst the paper was still wet. Now whilst opposite or complementary colours can look really great together on a piece of artwork, there is something that you need to be especially aware of when painting in watercolour, and that is that if you mix two complementary colours together, they neutralise each other out and you get a much duller, sometimes even muddy colour, which may not be what you want if you're aiming for a clean, fresh look and feel to your painting. However, you can use these more neutral tones to your advantage, and I'll talk more about that later on in the video. On this first layer though, I didn't want my complementary colours to mix, and if we look at the reference photo, the red part of the apple, which is at the top, transitions through some orangey yellow colours before it turns green at the bottom. So I made sure when painting wet on wet, that the red and green didn't directly mix to avoid this. So I used the orangey quinacrinone gold to transition from the red part to the green part of the apple but it doesn't mean you can't ever paint anything with two complementary colours next to each other, you can, but it's something you need to bear in mind when deciding on what order to paint in and what techniques you might choose to achieve the results you're after. Before we go into that though, I wanted to paint in the branch, and once again I wanted to use the wet in wet technique for this and used a mixture of burn umber and quinacridone purple. And just a tiny bit of neutral tint too. So I pre-wet the branch just with clean water on my brush and then lightly painted my purpley brown mix along the left hand side here, letting the paint bleed out to give me some easy highlights on the top of the branch where I could see them in my reference photo. For the darker parts of the branch, I used a more concentrated paint mix with less water and painted carefully around the apples with a small round brush. I needed to paint a few layers to the branches to get them as dark as I needed. So I just repeated the steps I'd done before, waiting for each layer to dry before adding the next one. And it's this that is the key to being able to paint complementary colours next to each other in watercolour. All you have to do is work in layers and make sure that each layer is completely dry before you paint in the next one. 
I'm probably oversimplifying things a bit as how transparent or opaque your watercolours are will also affect the result, but I would suggest trying it out with the watercolour paints you have and have fun experimenting. So for the next layer on my apples I repeated the same process as before to add more colour intensity and build on the previous layer. So here I've pre-wet the paper again before adding in more concentrated paint. I'm still keeping the red and green separate as before and using the quinacridone gold to transition between them to avoid them mixing together. I also make sure to thoroughly clean off my brushes between each colour change and always have two jars of water next to me, so one for cleaning my brush and one to rinse it off or use for mixing up my washes. But mixing complementary colours together isn't always bad and actually can produce some really interesting neutrals, greys and browns. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there are advantages to mixing complementary colours together and I'm going to try and demonstrate this on this second apple here. As you can see in the reference photo this apple has some nice cast shadows on it from the leaves above, but rather than painting them in using a separate grey, green or brown for example, I can mix the green and red together to create a muted tone that looks far more natural and interesting. And you can change up these neutral mixes just by adding in different amounts of either colour. So if I want more of a warmer red brown, I can add more red. And if I want a cooler green brown, I can add more green. Again, the transparency or opacity of your individual watercolours will play a part in determining whether your colour mixes look muddy or not, as transparent colours tend to work better for this than opaque ones. But have a play about and see what you can come up with with the colours that you've got at home. I'll need to darken these shadows up again once this layer is dry. So whilst the apples were drying I turned my attentions towards the leaves, which I have to admit is usually my least favourite part of any botanical painting, as I find them quite difficult, but I thought it would be interesting to play about with some different colour mixing of greens and get some practice in at the same time. So I mixed in a bit of red into my sap green which helped to dull it slightly and make it look more natural, and I used this colour to paint in the first layer on some of the leaves. I used the wet on dry technique where I wanted precision and control, and the wet in wet technique to drop in darker green paint and add variety. And for the darker leaves I mixed in some mauve to my sap green. I tried not to get too bogged down with each and every vein I could see on the leaves, and really tried to take my time and enjoy the process, concentrating more on colour and value, and building up the layers and details gradually. So once everything was dry and having painted some of the darker leaves, I now needed to add another layer to the apples to bring it all in line with each other. This time I used the wet on dry technique though and went straight in with some of my cadmium red light, softening the edges out on the apple with a clean damp brush. And because the underneath layers are dry, I can paint the red colour on the apple right next to the green area without worrying that the colours will mix together and become muddy or dull. I use more concentrated sap green to paint in the darker shadows underneath the apple. But on the side here I deliberately mix in a bit of red to my green to get a more muted colour for the area in shadow. Next, it was back to the second apple to work on defining the shadow areas. 
And with my base layers down and the paper dry, it was quite easy to build up the values here using a mixture of green and red in varying proportions. So there was more green in my paint mix on the lower part of the apple and more red in the mix at the top. It took a few layers, but I think it made for a more realistic and natural shadow colour than just using say grey or another ready mix colour from my palette. At this stage I was quite pleased with how the painting was coming together, but after allowing it to dry I had a break and came back to it with fresh eyes, and decided it needed a bit more touching up, so I went back in with a darker shadow colour to the second apple. I also painted another layer and added a bit more detail to some of the leaves. And darkened up the branch too. Here I'm just painting onto dry paper to add in some of the details on the branch. I also decided to paint another glaze to both of the apples as well, just to brighten them up and make them look really shiny and realistic. For this I used a mixture of cadmium red light with a bit of transparent red deep mixed in there as well. And when that was dry I painted another glaze of my green red mix to the bottom part of the first apple, softening out any edges with a clean damp brush, just to add more depth and form. All I had to do then was to put in some of the white details on the branch that I could see on my reference photo, and for this I used a white jelly roll pen. This painting was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed experimenting with complementary colours and finding out all kinds of interesting combinations. I think it's a great way to learn more about colour theory too, which will help you better understand colour mixing with any of your watercolour paints. But let me know what you think, and if you liked this video and found it interesting or helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it. If you're new to my channel and want to make sure you don't miss future videos, then please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.